Hello YouTube, it's David with a brand new video. Before we get into this, I want to wish you all a happy new year. Let's hope that 2024 is a much better year than 2023, 2022, 2021, 2020. Let's just hope it's a good year in general. Today we're here to review the 1995 movie Gamera Guardian of the Universe. Now, Gamera Guardian of the Universe is the first movie in the 90s Heisei reboot of the Gamera series. The Gamera series originally started way back in the 60s. It's a giant monster series, much in the vein of stuff like Godzilla. In fact, it pretty much came out to compete with and cash in on the success and popularity of Godzilla. And it proved to be very successful. It made a lot of movies in this franchise all the way from the 60s to the 80s, I believe. And then, much like Godzilla, they took a bit of an extended break and came back in 1995 with this movie. Now, Gamera, Guardian of the Universe, opens up with the crew of a sail ship that is escorting a ship with some radioactive cargo, discovering a floating piece of land that really shouldn't be there. It's something that's not in the charts, something that is just, they don't know where it's come from essentially. At the same time, a animal expert named Mayumi is hired by the police to help them investigate the disappearance of a professor that Mayumi knew, who went to a completely different mysterious island and just hasn't returned. There's been some alerts, there's been some warning signals, the only words they have is bird, bird, bird. They end up going to the island only to discover that the island is inhabited by giant flying reptilian creatures known as Gauss. The Gauss have destroyed the entire island, they've killed everyone and ate every life form on the island, they're hungry and they're heading for Tokyo. So there is a plan launched to go ahead and stop the gals and try and capture them before they kill too many people. Of course, as a giant monster movie, you have to have a few deaths. Wouldn't be entertaining otherwise. At the same time this is all going down, our main male character Yoshinari, who has gone off with the scientists to discover this island that's floating in the middle of nowhere to find out exactly what it is, they end up discovering this is in fact not an island, but it is a giant turtle known as Gamera. A giant turtle that can fly. And much like Gauss, Gamera is heading for Tokyo. From there, the two storylines, the two plotlines end up combining together. We have all of the characters meeting each other in Tokyo. Mayumi and Yoshinori end up meeting each other. And there's kind of some sort of romantic tension there, which isn't a major plot point of the movie by any means, but it's just a little thing that is kind of there in the background. Some really, really cool character work. But the main focus of the movie, of course, is the giant monster action. And believe me, the giant monster action in this movie is fantastic. Some of the best visual effects in any kaiju movie you've ever seen. Peak practical effects, great use of miniature works, pyrotechnics, fire, water effects. Just absolutely fantastic. So well done. This movie has an absolutely iconic scene I'm sure a lot of you have seen before involving Tokyo Tower, which is something that does seem to get brought up and destroyed in a hell of a lot of kaiju movies, because of course it does, it's iconic. Earlier on in the movie, Yoshinori ended up finding some stones on the land that we discovered later was Gamera that were cool and shiny and interesting, and he ended up giving one of the stones to Asagi, who is one of the daughters of the main professor that led the expedition to the island that turned out to be Gamera, and we discover through the movie that Asagi has a connection to Gamera. 
she can feel when he's in pain, when he's sad, when he's angry, when he's tired, she gets tired. There's a complete psychic and emotional connection between the giant turtle and this young girl, which is pretty much a staple for these types of giant monster movies. Not so much in Godzilla, but a lot of other franchises do have this. Here's the teenage or kid protagonist. So, you know, the kids watching can definitely relate to it, whereas the adults can have the adult characters, which I think is really fantastic. What's really notable actually is Asagi is played by the daughter of Steven Seagal. Yeah, I was shocked too. I guess a complete imbecile like Steven Seagal can still do at least one thing right in her life, I suppose. Anyway, I won't get too much more into the weeds about the plot of this movie. I don't want to spoil anything. All I'll say, and you can probably see by watching this video, the effects are just fantastic. The visuals are great, there's a great score in this movie as well that really really hypes up the action. Some of the best submission you've seen in any kaiju movie, some really cool convincing effects. In fact, this movie features one of the first female actors to portray a kaiju in the guise of Gauss, which I think is really really cool. Bit shocking it took till 1995 for that to happen, but at least it happened. If you like giant monster movies, if you like cool visual effects, if you're a fan of practical effects and the ins and outs of filmmaking, I cannot recommend Gamera Guardian of the Universe enough. If what I've said here has not convinced you to go ahead and watch Gamera Guardian of the Universe, I don't think anything will. But if you are convinced, definitely check it out. It's on a bunch of streaming platforms. It's also available on Blu-ray from Arrow Video. They've got a set for the original series and a set for the Heisei series. Definitely check it out. It's stunning, especially on Blu-ray where you can see all these really cool effects, see all these really intricate and fun miniatures that I am honestly jealous of. The fact that people can do this that people have this amount of skill to make these really convincing models is just so fantastic. Anyway, that's been my review of Gamera Guardian of the Universe from 1995. If you want to see any more reviews of the Gamera trilogy or any other kaiju movies, definitely let me know because it's something I would love to talk about on this channel more. Anyway, thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next video.